how to is Cloudflare's object storage solution designed to handle all your data and files efficiently. Whether you're storing large media files, creating a data lake, or delivering web assets, how to provides a flexible architecture to suit your needs. All of this with zero egress fees, so you don't have to worry about unexpected costs when moving your data. Let's walk through an example. Imagine we are creating a podcast application. I'm going to set up an R2 bucket for all my favorite episodes and show you how to perform some basic CRUD operations on it. Let's get started. A bucket in R2 is a container where you store your objects. Think of it as a folder or directory that can hold large numbers of files. To create your first bucket, log into Cloudflare's dashboard, go to your account and find the R2 landing page. Begin by entering a unique name that reflects the content or purpose of your bucket. For this, I want to create a bucket for storing podcast episodes, so I'll call mine podcasts. When creating your bucket, you need to decide on a data location. This determines where the objects in your bucket will be stored. Objects are pieces of data in your bucket that can be anything from a text file, an image, or even a video. And you have two options. First, automatic. This is the default and recommended option. It automatically chooses the closest available region for storing your bucket data based on the location of the caller. Now, the second option, specify jurisdiction. Use this option if you need to ensure that your data is stored and processed within a specific jurisdiction to comply with data residency requirements, such as those imposed by local regulations like the GDPR. Next, you can choose a storage class. This can either be standard or infrequent access. Standard is recommended for objects that are accessed at least once a month and infrequent access for objects that will be accessed less than once a month. Proceed with creating the bucket and just like that, you've created your first R2 bucket. Now that your podcast bucket is set up, it's time to upload some episodes. Use the upload function to add files from your local machine to the bucket. Great. Now let's go over some basic CRUD operations you can perform on your objects. We've already added the episode objects using the upload feature in the dashboard, but you can also programmatically add objects to your bucket using the workers runtime API or the S3 compatible API. We'll explore these methods in future episodes. To find an episode by name, locate its name in the podcast bucket you can preview some file types directly in the dashboard or download them for local use. Let's say you changed your mind about an episode. You can delete it by finding it in the list and initiate the deletion process. Confirm the action and the object will be removed from your bucket. And that's it. You are now equipped with the basics to set up your own podcast, website, or any other application you have in mind. Here are some common use cases for R2 and what R2 can help you with. You can use R2 for static website hosting, for storing cloud native applications, web content storage, as well as data lakes for analytics and big data. You can also use it for storing large batch processes, for archiving and backing up storage. But this is just the beginning. In the next video, we'll go over setting up public buckets. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the future episodes. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.